Equilibrium constants are a numerical indication of whether the products or reactants are favored in a reaction. Simply put, if the value of the equilibrium constant is greater than one, then we have more products. If it's less than one, we have more reactants. If it happens to equal one, which is very rare, then we have a 50-50 split. Okay, so how do you calculate these things? Well, not very difficult. It's simply a ratio of the products over reactants. The things you have to be careful with, you have to remember to utilize coefficients, as well as watch your states of matter. Okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna see that? So let's have a few examples. So in the first one, formation of ammonia, we always start by writing out what we call the equilibrium expression or equilibrium law. Okay, so that is what is the actual chemical expression involving the products and reactants. And it's always products first, products over reactants, watch your states of matter. Always use square brackets because they relate concentration. And notice it's just division multiplication. There's no addition or subtraction in these things. Uh, and remind you, these are square brackets, meaning moles per liter. They are some form of that. Okay, so before you put any values into these, we're not going to do that yet, but before you do, they must be in moles per liter. So what's missing here? Well, we don't have the, the coefficients involved. Okay, these coefficients of each of the terms become exponents in your KEQ expression. So we're going to have to square the ammonia. Nitrogen is just the ones. We leave it alone. And then hydrogen would be cubed. So that's it. That's all there is to determining equilibrium expression. But just like in the Chatelet's principle where you had to watch your states, you have to do that here as well. For instance, if we look at the second one down here, KEQ for the salt expression, this would be number one. When we were dealing with the Satsui's principle, we said, well, since I, if I add more solid salt to the system, nothing would happen because it's not really part of the equilibrium. It doesn't have a concentration. Okay, again, with concentration, which refers to moles of solute dissol dissolved in a liter of solvent. Well, the solid salt is just sitting at the bottom. It's not dissolved at all. So it will not take part in the equilibrium expression. So this is it for example number two. Okay, and just like that, for example number three, the pure liquid, the water, is actually the solvent of the system since it's aqueous. So it doesn't really have a specific concentration. It's a, it's a, it'd be a constant value, but we don't really care. So just ignore it. So example three, and you'd see this one a lot in the next unit, dealing with acids and bases. <coughs> concentration of the hydronium ion times chloride over the original acid. You won't really see it so much for something like hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, but it serves our illustration just fine. Okay, so you might want to ask yourself, um, what about the units involved here? If you notice, we have, in this first example, we have NH3 squared over N2 over H2 cubed. Well, that's kind of tricky, because that leaves you with moles per liter squared on top over moles per liter to the fourth on bottom, because we have 1 times 3 over there. So then that simplifies a bit to give us 1 over moles per liter squared, because these two would cancel out. And then I can, if I don't like it, expressing it that way, I could flip it over to have liters per mole squared. Well, that's not very useful and not very easy to come about. Over here, we would have moles per liter squared. Over here, we would just have 
moles per liter. Okay, so as you can see, the K value k units can vary from reaction to reaction. And since that is the case, we aren't going to care about units. Okay? Don't put units in. If you start putting them in when you're doing the calculations, you have to, you have to complete them. Okay? So don't bother. Save yourself some time. Okay, so. And there's the illustrated examples again. And we mentioned not more having to worry about the units. Okay, so in this example, we say at a certain temperature, we added two moles of nitrogen, two of hydrogen, and one and a half ammonia. It says that's at equilibrium. So right away, I'm at equilibrium. I set up my equilibrium law. Do that first. And I plug in my values, and I get my final answer at 0.14. And since it's less than one, that means that reactants are favored. One thing I'd like to point out here, so it says it's at a specific temperature. Equilibrium constants are what we call temperature dependent. Temperature dependent. What that means is that every reaction that is that can attain equilibrium could have a different equilibrium constant depending on the temperature of the reaction. Okay, so sometimes you're going to see questions about you know, which of these stresses would cause a uh, change the equilibrium constant. The only thing that changes the equilibrium constant is a temperature change. Okay, a little sudden um, instant changes or additions of energy won't change it, but if you do the reaction at say 25 degrees Celsius versus 100 versus 400 degrees Celsius, you would get very different potential and kinetic energy surroundings, environment, which would cause different reaction to occur or sorry, different rates of reaction to occur. And as a result, your K value would, be, would change. Okay? So concentration doesn't change equilibrium, which actually is principle fixes it. Pressure and volume, same thing. Quick change in temperature, you know, just uh, instant addition of heat, that won't change it either, but if you do the reaction and keep it at a different temperature, then you would get a new K value. Okay, so most of our examples are going to be like this where you're already at equilibrium and you just have to plug in your numbers and solve. Either you're going to be given equilibrium concentrations like you are here and solve for K or you will be given K and have to rearrange and solve for an equilibrium concentration. Sometimes you'll be given a reaction and its K value or given the values either are in this case, we're saying, okay, KEQ has been determined to be 0.14. So that's all we know. Okay, let's assume we didn't have the other uh, values given to us. So, the question might be, solve for the K of the reverse reaction. Well, to get the K of the reverse reaction, it's simply calculate the inverse, the reciprocal. You just take 1 divided by the forward reaction to give you the... Uh, K value of the reverse. Now, in this scenario, we have a little, we have some different words. Notice it's saying moles of hydrogen were injected into a flask. Well, what's that mean? That means we're not at equilibrium. And if we're not at equilibrium, we got to figure out our equilibrium values, which means we need to use what we call an ice chart. Okay, they're not, not too bad. So, how do we work it out? Same as before, we want to set up an equilibrium law because at some point we're going to have to use it. Have my equilibrium law here. And then we have what we have our, called our ICE chart. Okay, ICE. Initial change equilibrium. Well, start filling in the values I have. Again, making sure things are in moles per liter, just like an equilibrium law. So I have two moles per liter of each nitrogen and hydrogen. And I was told I had 0.5 moles of ammonia to finish off. Well, now I can fill in this blank. Well, I know that the reaction before it begins, there can't be any products unless you add them yourself. So I can assume then that my products is going to be zero. 
And since that's zero, and my final equilibrium value harmonia is 0.5, well, that must mean I change by 0.5. Now that's an important number. Once I have one change value, I can use it, so that positive 0.5, I'm going to use that one to figure out the other change values. How do I do that? That's some mini stoichiometry. I'm going to take 0.5 and times it by 1 over 2. And that's going to give me my change value here. 0.5 and 1 over 2 is 0.25. And then 0.5 times 3 over 2 is going to be 0.75. I do my subtraction. 2 minus 0 0.25 is 1.75 and 1.25, then I can answer any question I need to. Whether it be calculate K, I might be done at this point, I might have to figure out number of moles or number of liters or number of grams of anything at equilibrium or at the initial state. Uh, just be careful, make sure you read that question and analyze as you need. Uh, please be careful. Oftentimes you guys will remember to calculate to calculate all these change values and you'll, and you'll stop there. You'll be happy to remember to do an ice chart. But don't forget you have to carry on and calculate your equilibrium values at some point. Okay, and, and most of the time you'll have to start, you'll be in the initial and be looking for final, but it could be completely opposite where you have to, where you're given a K value and have to solve for equilibrium concentration, then go in reverse to solve for your initial concentrations.